Joe Kelly, thanks for joining us today. We really appreciate your leadership uh, of the state and uh, the state's economic development area. Talk to us about the incentive programs that you're working on and have launched. Well, th thanks, Jim, for reaching out to, to chat. Um, thank you for your leadership. It's been great working with you and, and your various roles uh, over the past you know, six years now. Um, and uh, as always, I thank the governor for, for giving me the opportunity to serve my home state and, and to work with all of you. I know there's a lot of friendly faces in the audience. Um, you know, right now, it is a really hot economy in New Jersey, especially uh, as it relates to new development projects. We're seeing the, um, the, you know, the, the Economic Recovery Act that the governor signed into law in January has 14 uh, billion and change uh, of incentives. Um, that are starting to, uh, the rules are starting to hit the street and uh, we're starting to see a lot of traction, uh, both in terms of new ground up development, corporate relocations, um, some retentions, uh, and you know the post COVID reality for New Jersey, I think is really strong because people are starting to question higher density, uh, larger urban environments and, and giving more thought to you know, suburban environments and, and mid-level cities like we have. Um, and so, you know, we have a real opportunity here to use the Economic Recovery Act and all 14 billion of those incentive dollars uh, to work with kind of the, the gravitational pull behind COVID um, and what we're seeing from the corporate community uh, and from, from lenders and others. Right. Uh, and, you know, in, in particular, there's a few programs that we, we've kept going from the old regime that we like as well, but happy to dig in here with you, Jim, and talk about some of the specific programs if that works. Absolutely. Well, let's talk about the big one. Let's talk about Emerge. Sure. So this was the, the, the successor to the GROW program, which I think a lot of people are familiar with. Um, and, you know, we wanted to make some pretty hearty tweaks to, to GROW uh, to make it more in line with the governor's vision. Um, certainly tailored it more towards the sectors uh, that the governor has put at the, the forefront of his economic development agenda. Uh, things like financial services, bio, life science, um, tech, transportation, logistics, um, gaming, uh, and then some other industries that are more, more of the burgeoning variety like FinTech and things like that, where we, we think New Jersey could have an outsized role um, in advancing uh, uh, you know, the growth of those sectors. And so this is you know, similar to GROW, it is a per, per job uh, relocation or retention incentive. Um, but again, with a little bit more focus um, probably not as generous as GROW was because, you know, we, we all un, you know, understand and have seen um, some of the, the critiques and commentary on GROW and not to relive that. Wanted to make a much more targeted incentive um, that would allow us to compete um, and, and kind of take back a lot of the industries that other, or some of our peer states have, have done a good job of tracking away from New Jersey and then take industries that we, thought, that we think we can dominate um, that are close to our, you know, kind of our bread and butter um, and bring those across the border into New Jersey and, and help them grow here. Um, so emerge, the emerge rules are out. Um, you know, I think people can begin to apply uh, this summer. Um, Tim Sullivan at the EDA and his team have done an amazing job of standing up those regs in record time. Um, and it, it's a really important incentive for us because we know that we're in a moment right now where a lot of corporates are looking at New Jersey and we wanted to make sure um, we could get, you know, get those applications in the door pronto. Great. And uh, Tim has done a great job. But for this audience of real estate developers, business folks, is there one thing about the new program that you want to highlight for them? Yeah, look, I think I think there's um, and this is probably a good segue into some of the other programs, because, you know, the one good thing about all these incentives I'll talk about is you can kind of stack a lot of them together. Not all of them, but you can you can look creatively about how you would use the Brownfield incentive or um, the Aspire program, which is the successor to ERG, or how you'd use Emerge plus, um, you know, some of the other programs as, as it relates to uh, uh, Brownfield, et cetera, to, to kind of cobble together um, the most uh, lucrative deal for, you know, for either for the developer or for um, the corporation that you're trying to attract. Um, but I think the, the main thing I would point out about Emerge is we wanted to be very careful about the locations and the sectors that we're targeting and making sure that we heard that, you know, the richness of the incentive is going to be when you're talking about the sectors that the governor has been talking about. So again, the financial services, uh, the innovation economy kind of sectors, the bio, life sciences, et cetera, um, tech, 
and then when you put that in in the right locale, uh, so your Newarks or your New Brunswick's to just pick on on two cities or larger towns. It's not to say that we can't make it work in a Morris Plains. We absolutely could, uh, but the you know the, the 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 richness of the incentive will be where you can, when you can point a company toward um, an environment that that is really right for rebound, and then also has the kind of uh, clustering that we're seeing happening organically with with these different sectors and companies. Great. And I know I've just read some recent uh, data about the the demand for lab space post. Yep. pandemic and that uh, we are really well positioned to take advantage of that trend. So, uh, so that that's obviously some silver yep. lining to this, uh, this terrible pandemic. So tell us about the Aspire program. Yep. So this is the successor to, um, to ERG and, and just a, a point on ERG, we extended that uh, through calendar year 2021. So the good news is, if you like Derg, if you, if you you know if you, if you like your old pair of shoes, you can keep them. Uh, but if you want a new shiny pair, we've got Aspire for you. Um, and uh, you know that there's there's a lot there's a lot of good stuff here. Erg was it was a pretty strong program to start, so it's not a ton of um, huge massive tweaks to call out. I would I would just say a couple of things. One is um, we provided that you know that transformational program in Erg, which is um, the, the the 10 250 million dollar uh, awards capped at $250 million per award for your larger kind of uh, million square foot, a thousand unit type, you know, uh, mixed use projects. Um, so th those, that, that would be something that I would call out um, as, a, as, a, as a change to the program from, from the ERG days, which is, which is interesting and innovative. Um, and, and again, you know, if you, if you read the governor's economic plan in 2018, uh, it's still relevant to this day because it gives you the blueprint for how, you know, we think about um, rewarding growth and the type of policies that we want to see embedded uh, in, in all of these programs. So, for example, in Aspire, you know, we want to make sure, obviously, prevailing wage and using um, prevailing wage and your build, not only on, on building the building, but then on uh, with, with those who are occupying or sorry, who are, who are um, uh, managing the, the buildings, your janitors, your doormen, et cetera. Um, we want to make sure that project, uh, sorry, that uh, community benefit agreements um, are honored and encouraged in these deals. Um, but we also want to make sure we create a rich incentive that helps cover some of those public policy ambitions that the governor's put forth. Uh, and so, you know, we, we're Aspire, we're willing to fill up to 50% of, of, of the gap, the capital stack. So it's a financing gap tool, just like ERG was, but it's richer. Um, so, you know, in that, in that respect, you know, there, you know, if you're a developer, you might say, oh, it's, there's some challenging elements because I don't necessarily always have to do a community, be community benefit agreement. But, you know, we realized that there might be extra costs incurred. So we made the incentive richer. Um, and again, coming back to my point about the innovation economy, certain locales, uh, certain sectors being important for the governor to, to spur growth and, um, you know, Aspire fits that, that, you know, that mold again. And, and Aspire's, when I talk about kind of these incentives being stackable, Aspire is kind of the one that is the most stackable in many respects, because you can use Aspire with a brownfield. Um, you could uh, also say, um, I've got, you know, two contiguous properties. Maybe there's a, um, you know, a historic property next door to a vacant lot. I want to remediate the vacant lot. I want to um, kind of do, you know, transform the historic property. And now we, now we actually have a historic tax and, you know, tax credit, which we never had in the state before, for whatever reason, I think we're one of 12 states who didn't have it. So good on us for now getting our act together and doing it, but you could, in this little example I'm using here, you could, you know, remediate the brownfield. You could reposition the historic asset, uh, using the historic property tax program. Uh, and then you could get an Aspire grant to build on, uh, you know, on, on the, the brownfield lot. So you, you, there's a lot to pull from there um, using three of the, you know, whatever it is, dozen programs we created. Um, and, and hopefully it brings down your costs, closes the gaps and, and enables, you know, towns and municipalities to create real, you know, really nice walkable areas that have a sense of place that drive foot traffic. Um, and, I, and I know it's not something that is kind of, you know, not necessarily a front burner issue for a lot of developers, but it's really important. Um, for, for development and for mayors, um, it's just making sure Main Street 
and small business is vital uh, coming back from COVID. So that's why in the Economic Recovery Act, there's $50 million for, you know, there's a $50 million Main Street Recovery Fund, which is basically, you know, capital that you can use to take, you know, the abandoned retail space that was an Italian restaurant that didn't make it through COVID, unfortunately, and now wants to become, you know, your, you know, hipster coffee spot next to the new mixed use or residential property across the street. Like, if you're a developer, you don't want to see the vacant retail spot. You want to see a nice, cool coffee shop going in there. And the Main Street Recovery Fund will help give the money to make sure that that entrepreneur can, you know, do the fit out, buy the coffee machine, you know, whatever else that needs to be done um, and just kind of boost them a little bit in terms of their startup costs. So, you know, we're looking at this at both ends of the spectrum. We're not just throwing money uh, at the big developments or big corporations. We're also thinking about how we curate the right kind of main street corridor and the right environment uh, for development. And, and that that's good for developers, right? Because it's only going to increase your property value. So uh, kind of a soup, nut, soup to nuts approach on all these programs, how they fit together and, and specifically how they fit the, you know, how they help to close the financing gap. You know, I'm glad you mentioned that, Joe, because quality of life, you know, vibrant downtowns are really key to the, you know, the, the economy, right? And yep. we'll, what will attract people who can now live anywhere, right? And we've benefited as a state from this sort of exodus from the city, right? And people wanting more space. And, uh, and I'm just so glad that we have a slew, dozens of programs yep. uh, that you guys have, have um, launched or, or, or overseen to really help make it um, as attractive as possible for people to move in and people to stay. Yep. And businesses to stay because uh, I think I think we all know we have a maybe two or three year period here where we really have this um, influx. Yeah, we can keep folks and 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 you know make them happy with quality of life, uh, have a user friendly type of you know government. You know, and I yep. just going through the website looks amazing. You know, really easy to use. I'm really really proud of what you guys have done. So, is there anything else you have? A lot of programs. Anything else you want to note for our audience? Yeah, I would I would call out some of the new programs that that aren't real estate specific in the truest sense of the word, but um, that that have adjacency to to real estate development. So here's a couple: uh, the Wind Program. You know, uh, it's gonna that's gonna do a ton to transform South Jersey, Salem County, and Paulsboro and Atlantic City. Um, I, you know, that's a you know multi billion dollar industry that's getting stood up. It's gonna create a lot of investment in South Jersey. I think that's good for anybody who's looking at developing. Uh, land south of 195 or along the coast or along the Delaware River. So that's one thing I'd call out just as a kind of a big macro factor. Uh, second thing I'd call out, and I'd give props to the governor and the speaker on this, uh, the Food Desert Relief Program. This comes back to my point about having a holistic view on, on real estate development and, and, and what it means for the community. Um, we have too, way too many food deserts in this state for a state as rich as we are um, as an economy as rich as it is, you know, one of the, I think it's top 30 in the, in the whole world. If it's a standalone economy in New Jersey. Um, it's embarrassing the amount of food deserts we have. So being able to come into your Atlantic cities and to your Camden's, et cetera, and stand up your a grocery store. I mean, that's good for everybody. It's just going to, that's just going to raise property values and it's going to create a better, to your point, uh, standard of living. So uh, that's a big one. I would take the, all of the innovation focused tax credits. And I, I've probably said innovation a lot already, but you know, the net operating loss program, the uh, evergreen venture capital incentive, which is first of its kind of any, you know, any, uh, any state or, or country really, um, in terms of spurring venture capital dollars going into New Jersey based companies, um, the angel investor tax credit. I mean, all of those, all of those programs are going to help keep our big corporates engaged in growing our startup community. And then that's going to help build out more, in, you know, incubators, accelerators, and those guys build, uh, end up building either more space for, for said incubators and accelerators or the companies as they become, you know, kind of growth stage companies and blossom. It, it'll help take, you know, the, the Newarks and New Brunswick's of the world or the Princeton's or wherever you're seeing kind of clustering happening in, in tech and other uh, sectors. You're just going to see the expansion of that using the money in those programs. Um, last thing I'd say, and this is this is a huge one, um, probably could do my own 30 minute spiel just on this, but film. Uh, the film tax credit program, not only on production, but on real estate. Uh, and you know, now we are going to try and incentivize the actual development of studio space. 
if you talk to a big asset manager, you talk to the Blackstones or Blackrocks of the world, uh, Prudential, you know, they'll tell you that the estimates are there's at minimum a 40 million square foot shortage in sound stages, uh, you know, in this hemisphere, uh, just based off of the production uh, estimates for the largest um, studios. So take your Netflixes and your Paramounts and your Sonys and your Disneys. They, they, there's a 40 million square foot shortfall pretty much in North America. Uh, that's crazy. Um, and then when you compound that with the fact that states like Georgia and Texas um, and a lot of the you know, Sunbelt states don't have political environments um, that fit that industry, New Jersey is, with this tax incentive package and this governor's leadership is you know really ready to dominate uh, that entire sector, and so I think and th I think it's there's good economics because those jobs are good union jobs below the line. They're attractive jobs above the line for the talent. Obviously, building brick and mortar is always good for the economy. It creates you know multiplier effect for a local community. So we we get all we get all the economic impact created by film, but it's also a branding exercise for the state, and it's a shot in the arm for morale and it gets us away from the image of kind of the sleepy suburban state of the 20th century into a kind of sexier, innovative state of the 21st century, where, you know, if you're going for a jog through West Orange, you might bump into Whoopi Goldberg or Jan Jennifer Aniston after they're done filming, uh, you know, on, on your way to, you know, the incubator versus, you know, what, and I love West Orange, I'll have to pick on it now, but, you know, uh, versus what you've seen, you know, uh, over the past 20th century, which is much more car commuter driven, uh, uh, dislocated kind of corporate settings, which work, but we need to have both. And so I think, you know, that vibrancy, just again, that general sexiness that that film will bring to the state um, is uh, is is a nice icing on, on a, a really rich set of incentives that we already have here. Um, and it's kind of New Jersey's legacy. We've always been in innovators. And I think um, this recovery package is going to is really going to propel us to the top of the class. Yeah, I know. And it also um, there's a lot of visionary developers who are listening right now. And clearly yep. there's a lot of commercial space that can be reimagined yep. into some of the studio space, frankly. And uh, it, it also ties into our history. Right. Thomas yep. Edison right, uh, invented sort of this industry. We used to have yep. a thriving one. So th this is this would be really, as you say, icing on the cake. Uh, but yeah. there's, there's a lot here and there's a lot, lot to offer. And uh, I'm really glad, Joe, that you came on today to no, talk about this. And again, thank you for your leadership. Thank you for uh, Tim and Phil's leadership, obviously the, the governor. We really appreciate it. And we look forward to uh, making this state even stronger going forward. Appreciate it, Jim. Th thank you for all you do. And, and one last thing I'd say, I, I, just because you reminded me there in the end, you know, our mayors have been talking to us, whether it's West Orange or Morristown or, you know, Salem, they've all been talking to us about what we need to do to reposition our real estate assets as we head into, you know, 2020, 2021, 2022. And not to make news here, but I think the governor will soon be talking about how we use a lot of ARP money um, on planning grants and the like. So, I hope this conversation got everybody thinking. To your point, uh, I think there's there's probably a lot more we can do to reposition the state, um, and I and I know the governor is willing to, to dedicate resources to do it. So thank you, and thanks everybody for for listening to us today, and look forward to uh, fruitful 2021. Thanks again, Joe. Take thank care. you. Thanks for joining us. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please like it, leave a review, and subscribe. See you soon.